Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning. I want to be uh, respectful of everyone's time. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Uh, this is the first in a series of media availabilities I'll have to discuss legislative proposals for the upcoming session of the Georgia General Assembly. For our purposes today, I am announcing two such proposals. One, in the interest of government transparency, I intend to introduce a resolution during next year's session that would allow members to vote on changing our Senate rules to end the practice of unrecorded votes on the floor of the State Senate. I've heard it said that the unrecorded hand vote, known as rise, stand, and be counted, is necessary to speed up debate. Those of us dedicated to government accountability reject the premise that duly elected state senators, for any reason, should ever cast a vote on any issue that cannot be readily visible and noted by our constituents. After serving in the legislature for five years, I can say with a degree of certainty that we do not suffer from a lack of time to deliberate, but rather the time we have is not being appropriately prioritized. Ending the practice of unrecorded votes, I suspect, will result in a more deliberative and transparent public policy formation process that benefits all involved. The Senate is in fact empowered to amend this and all of our rules at any time during our two-year biennium, and I intend to give the Senate that opportunity very early next year. Secondly, regarding the crime of illegal immigration, I want to announce the expansion of the language and goals contained in Senate Bill 6. I am aware that many may not regard this as having the importance of a billion dollar a year transportation tax increase, but I have seen estimates that we spend about two and a half billion dollars each year as a direct result of the crime of illegal immigration in our state. According to DHS, we have more illegal aliens in this state than Arizona. While that crime is lowering our wages, hurting our own poor, costing us jobs, and doing perhaps permanent damage to the concept of a government operated on the rule of law. All of that must be secondary to the fact that the Obama administration and local governments across the nation are releasing convicted, violent, deportable criminal aliens onto American streets who are murdering innocent people. The most recently completely preventable murder of yet another American, Catherine Steinle, who was murdered by an illegal alien who had multiple previous felony criminal convictions and had been deported five times can and I fear will eventually happen here in Georgia. I am guessing that the general public is unaware that at least three law enforcement agencies in the metro Atlanta area reportedly have the same policies in place that allowed Kate Steinle's illegal alien killer to be released by San Francisco law enforcement. While there are very powerful forces aligned against any legislative actions intended to deter illegal immigration and illegal employment here in Georgia, I'm in hopes that our life-saving bill will at least be granted a hearing in the Senate and that the number of co-sponsors will increase. I will be introducing substitute language designed to increase public safety and save American lives. We know that enforcement works at encouraging illegal aliens to leave Georgia. Attrition of, not an increase in, the illegal alien population is the goal of the enforcement provisions of Senate Bill 6. The additions to my bill that already contains language to end the current practice of rewarding any illegal alien with a Georgia driver's license will include a component that clarifies and expands the state definition of sanctuary, so-called sanctuary governments and policies. Currently, I am informed that sheriff's offices in Clayton, DeKalb, and Fulton counties have in place policies that refuse cooperation with federal law enforcement regarding immigration and customs enforcement requests to hold illegal alien prisoners for federal enforcement action. To be clear, we are exploring all possible methods of sanctioning any government agency that refuses to cooperate with ICE on detainers or sharing of information. Secondly, it is our intent to put into state law a requirement that state law enforcement officials are given access to currently available data from federal law enforcement sources regarding criminal aliens released onto American streets by the Obama administration, and if possible, make that information available in the form of a public 
online registry. My thought is that if we can track and register sex offenders, we can and should do the same for criminal illegal aliens to protect American lives. We will be grateful for any and all assistance from our delegation in Washington on this. Third, to ensure that Americans and, Ill and legally admitted immigrants are not replaced in line by illegal aliens, language is being added to Senate Bill 6 to clarify the intention of the legislature that no illegal alien will qualify for in-state tuition at university system schools or technical colleges and are more clearly prohibited from accessing HOPE scholarship funding. Fourth, also in the interest of deterrence and making Georgia much less attractive to illegal immigration, Senate Bill 6 will be modified so as to prohibit aliens who do not have legal status from being licensed or employed as professionals in public schools or practicing law as attorneys as is happening in other states. To the sure to come mindless howls of mean-spirited and anti-immigrant, let me be clear. Our intention is to honor our immigration system and the value of American citizenship by protecting the rule of law and the taxpayers we were elected to serve and defend. In my view, under the Gold Dome, we should strive to be pro-enforcement on immigration. A time traveler from the Georgia of even 10 years ago would be astounded by the unconstitutional actions of our president and the current reward system we have in place in this state for illegal aliens that the Obama administration has endeavored to grant executive amnesty. <coughs> we must not be a party to matching President Obama with a Georgia amnesty. The results of the creeping incrementalism of the last several years is undeniable. In conclusion, to secure the safety of our people, of our state, so that no one in Georgia is the victim of a wanton crime that should never have happened, like what happened to Kate Steinle in San Francisco. To ensure that Georgians who are suffering from unemployment rates above the national average have a fair opportunity to get employed. And to end the reward system for illegal aliens in Georgia, I can and will continue to press for immediate consideration and action on the proposals I've outlined today. Now what I'd like to do is to introduce my friend, Sheriff Neil Warren from Cobb County, who has some additional remarks on this subject. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you, Sylvia. Appreciate you inviting me to uh, be a part of this. First thing I want to say is that uh, uh, there should be no uh, immig immigration sanctuaries cities or counties in this great state of Georgia. We should all abide by the rule of law. In fact, there should not be uh, any sanctuary cities or counties across this great nation but the United States of America. My good friend, the State Senator McCoon's his efforts during the last legislative session with Senate Bill 6 have been widely applauded. And I'm very proud to stand by him today as he works to further his fight to protect our state and its people. We have seen time and time again how the immigration status of illegal aliens does not prevent them from, from enjoying many of the same privileges and rights of our citizens. Senator, Senator McCoon's efforts will help ensure that only those who are legal status, of legal status, can be licensed as a teacher, as a, or become a lawyer, or benefit from in-state tuition. Uh, uh, in, in state tuition rates for our uh, of our colleges and university, the senator's proposal to legislate state requirements to obtain and share information is by registration of criminal aliens who were released by the uh, by President Obama's administration is an important step in using state funds to support law enforcement agencies that honor ICE detainers is another tool that will help law enforcement throughout this state 
in dealing with these criminal, illegal aliens. Georgia has been a leader in it when it comes to protecting the rights of our citizens and those, have, uh, and, and those of the uh, immigrants who have come to this country legally. Combating and fighting illegal immigration and protecting our communities must be and must remain a priority in the next le legislative session. And I pledge my continued support, support of this effort. And again, Senator, I want to thank you for uh, allowing me to be able to be a part of this, and uh, and I, I uh, will continue to support you. Thank you uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will have copies of this of my remarks and uh, be around to answer any questions or comments you may have. Thank you. Next, I'd like to uh, <clears throat> call upon uh, Major Kirk Williamson from the Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office. Major. Good morning. Good morning. I'll be reading a prepared statement from Butch Conway, the Sheriff of Gwinnett County. I congratulate State Senator Josh McCoon for his recognition of the need for taking all possible steps to ensure and improve public safety concerning the criminal aliens who are released onto our streets by the sanctuary cities across the nation and the current administration in Washington, D.C. The Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office has been taking advantage of the federal 287G program since its approval in July of 2009. We know that locating illegal aliens who have been arrested for or convicted of other crimes serves to protect American lives and improve our homeland security. Since instituting the 287G program, my office has seen a decrease in the illegal alien jail population, which in turn has reduced our cost of incarceration. We credit the attrition of the illegal alien population in our jail to the promise of immigration enforcement. My office will continue to honor all lawful requests from ICE to hold prisoners in our custody for immigration review. I am proud to support Senator McCoon's concept of a state-required registry of criminal illegal aliens who have been released into American society with no apparent concern for the potential deadly consequences. I also support the concept of providing state assistance to law enforcement authorities that adhere to common sense policies and fully cooperate with federal immigration enforcement. I welcome all legal immigrants that wish to improve their quality of life by residing in Gwinnett County, which has become rich in diversity over the past 19 years that I have served as sheriff. However, I have made it known for years that I would stand behind deporting any criminal illegal aliens who endanger our citizens. I view the safety of our citizens as my highest calling as sheriff of Gwinnett County. Like the majority of Georgians, my personal view is that rewarding any illegal alien with a driver's license is counterproductive to making Georgia less welcoming to the crime of illegal immigration. While uncounted thousands of Americans, including hundreds of Georgians, have lost loved ones because of the refusal of successive administrations to enthusiastically <coughs> enforce immigration laws, the senseless and preventable murder of a young woman named Catherine Stanley in San Francisco last week must be recognized as a wake-up call to all of us. I think Senator McCoon, along with the legislatures assisting him with his legislation and wholeheartedly endorse his efforts. Thank you. I also want to read to you a letter from Union County Sheriff Mac Mason who could not be with us this morning. I'm unable to stand with you today, but please be advised you have my personal and professional support and endorsement in your effort to end the practice of rewarding any illegal aliens with a Georgia driver's license, including the illegals to whom Pre President Obama has illegally granted deferred action on deportation. The best way to discourage illegal immigration and to defend our state is with enforcement of our immigration laws and a determined and straightforward declaration that illegal aliens are not welcome in Georgia. We are aware that the Obama deferred deportation status does not grant legal immigration status. I also understand you have taken action to obtain and make public a registry of the criminal aliens the President is releasing back into American communities. Because this insanity is resulting in the deaths of innocent Americans, I judge your effort to be a logical and common sense move that we hope will save the lives of Georgians we are entrusted to protect and serve as public servants. Please inform my office of any assistance we can offer in your very worthy and courageous cause. Sincerely, Mac Mason, Sheriff, Union County. 
Uh, finally, uh, before we take questions, I would like to recognize Mr. D.A. King, a nationally recognized expert on immigration policy. Thank you, Senator. Good morning, everybody. My name is D.A. King. I am president of the Dustin Inman Society. We are best described as a pro-enforcement coalition of citizens focused on immigration control. Um, I have personally been coming to the Georgia Capitol for more than a decade in an effort to educate legislators and the public, including the media, on immigration matters. And I want to, A, thank Senator McCoon for allowing me to speak, address some of his points, and congratulate him on his perseverance on Senate Bill 6. <clears throat> when I first began coming to the Georgia Capitol, it was controlled by Democrats. And people in the country illegally could not get a Georgia driver's license. And then the Republicans took over, and the laws were strengthened to discourage illegal immigration into the state of Georgia. As you have heard, the president's illegal action on granting deferred action on deportation does not repeat, does not give legal status to the illegal aliens who have been promised this delayed action on deportation. But because of a wrinkle in the Georgia law created in good faith, the work permit and the social security number the President Obama has seen fit to award to the illegal aliens qualifies them for not only a Georgia driver's license, but for a state ID card and most of our public benefits, including unemployment compensation. I assure you that was not the intent of these laws as they were drafted. Passing Senate Bill 6 is paramount in making Georgia less attractive to illegal immigration. Senate Bill 6 will pass if one of two things happens. And I want to make it clear I'm speaking for myself right now, but one of the things that will happen to make Senate Bill 6 pass is if the Chamber of Commerce and the agriculture industry gives its okay to the establishment Republicans who run this building. Secondly, if we are able to create enough public support on state representatives and state senators next year in an election year. Now, option A is not going to happen, so we're going to rely on option B. I want to commend the senator also for his effort to stop unrecorded votes in the Georgia State Senate. Um, on a floor amendment situation, when Senator McCoon was not allowed even so much as a hearing on his bill that would stop driver's licenses from going to illegal aliens, the plan B was a floor amendment, which he offered and then asked for a counted vote. Now, the default measure for a floor amendment is a raise your hand, unrecorded vote. The way they decide in the Senate on whether or not to have a recorded vote is with another unrecorded raise your hand vote. Unrecorded won, and we the people lost. When they did have a raise your hand vote on whether or not to accept the amendment, it lost. Even some of one of the 12 co-sponsors of Senator McCoon's bill voted against it when he knew he would not be recorded and be held accountable to his constituency. Whether or not Senate Bill 6 passes, I am hopeful that the Senator's resolution to allow a vote in the Senate on doing away with unrecorded votes becomes a reality. Um, I'll be very curious to see if the vote on whether or not to do away with unrecorded votes is held with an unrecorded vote. Um, secondly, regarding the driver's licenses for illegal aliens, um, I have asked through the Senator's office for more than a month for an image of the driver's licenses that are issued to the illegal aliens with deferred action status. Finally, that was granted. I asked for front and back. I only got the front. But I want to make clear that the driver's licenses that are given to illegal aliens are almost the exact duplicates of the driver's license given, given to American citizens or to legitimate businessmen here doing business on a, on a work visa. This is not a very secure way to do it. I've also asked for a copy of the Georgia ID card given to illegal aliens and I am told DDS does not have a copy of the ID card that they issued to illegal aliens, which is quite amusing to me. And I'm hitting DDS because 
there's a problem in this building that maybe somebody in the media wants to check out, but DDS is telling legislators and at least one county sheriff that they are not issuing driver's licenses to illegal aliens. I have this in writing with emails between DDS and several legislators. DDS is telling people, one more time, that they're not issuing driver's licenses to illegal aliens. That is completely false. It is intentionally inaccurate. It is intentionally misleading. The Dustin Immigrant Society was named after a young man who was forever 16, who was killed on Father's Day weekend, the year 2000, by an illegal alien who was given a North Carolina Georgia driver, excuse me, a North Carolina driver's license at the time. We often hear about we should, shouldn't enforce our immigration laws because of quote unquote family separation. I'm here to tell you that Billy and Kathy Inman's only child is gone forever because we do not enforce our borders, our immigration laws, and our employment laws. I'm telling you the Inman family was separated forever because of the special interest lobbies insisting that we do not enforce our immigration laws. The tragedy that occurred the other day, or now more than a week ago, I think, in San Francisco, of a young woman being killed by an illegal alien is not the only occasion. I feel horrible for that family, but at least it's getting some media attention and people are waking up to the fact that American lives matter, that we are being killed because our borders are not secured, because employers are demanding taxpayer subsidized labor. <clears throat> The defense that I can see that American citizens have when they are met with illegal aliens with intentions to kill them is to simply put their hands up and say, don't shoot, because our government is not helping us. One more time, thank you very much, State Senator, for including me. Um, in closing, I want to make clear that both my own sheriff in Cobb County, Sheriff Warren, and in, in Gwinnett County, Butch Conway, have decided to take advantage of the 287G program, which allows them to check the immigration status of incoming prisoners. Just as an example of what we're up against, when Sheriff Conway was originally organizing and ICE was working with him to see about the outcome or the possibilities for 287G in his jail, they had a 26-day trial test or a surge. And they, they, they ran the test on everybody in the jail population and they ended up issuing 914 detainers or finding 914 illegal aliens in their jail. Of those, nine, about half of those already had criminal convictions. But just to give you an idea of the danger and the fact that illegal immigration is not a victimless crime, of that 914, just the, the top six that I picked out, nine, uh, 13 of them were in jail with the charge of murder. Rape, 15. 23 of the illegal aliens in the Gwinnett County Jail were there for child molestation charges. Aggravated assault, 38. Armed robbery, 28. Battery, 15. I've been back and forth from the United States to Mexico many times. I can tell you that illegal aliens in Mexico cannot get a driver's license. And I can tell you that there is no need for a press conference from a very courageous state senator in Mexico offering up a bill that will save American lives and return Georgia to the rule of law because they would laugh somebody like that out of the building because it's so completely unnecessary. I want to congratulate and thank Senator McCoon one more time, and I appreciate people coming today. I'm hopeful that the death of the woman in, in San Francisco actually produces some res results and some protections. Thank you very much. At this time, I'd ask uh, if the sheriff and the major will join us. Um, if there are any questions, we'd like to entertain those at this time. Sheriff Warren, if you can maybe expand on those numbers and, and what you found and then what happens to these folks once they are through the court of law, and yeah. are, are, can they be deported or how does how that all work? I, I would tell you, uh, <clears throat> since uh, we... Uh, became a partnership with Homeland Security and the ICE. Uh, 
at one time, I don't, and I don't have all the numbers with me today, but at any given time, we, we had somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe three to 400 individuals in our facility that uh, had a hole for the uh, ice. Of course, they were in our facility on other charges and the waitings to, uh, 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 we have to complete the charges, local charges before ICE uh, will come pick them up. Uh, I can tell you that our partnership with, that, with the Homeland Security, uh, the men and women that work in ICE, uh, not only locally here and, 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 and uh, works with us, but the uh, brave uh, Border Patrol agents, which I have been out there several times, they are very dedicated <laughs> law enforcement officers. Their issue is you have a bunch of bureaucrats in Washington that is stopping them from doing their job. Uh, this morning, uh, and it's been, I, I've seen the trend go down, I think somewhere in the neighborhood of about 40 individuals were in my custody with uh, holes uh, uh, from uh, ICE uh, so that uh, waiting for our local charges to be completed. So uh, I, I know it works, uh, and, I, and, and I will tell you this, that this is based on, there's no roundups. Uh, we're not, I and the other jurisdictions in Cobb County, uh, law enforcement officers, we're not going out and profiling. These are individuals. Uh, over the years that we have that have been in our custody and a hole was placed on them by the uh, by the uh, <laughs> ICE were individuals who were involved in accidents they were involved and arrested uh, evidently uh, being involved in some type of criminal activity and was brought to our jail and, uh, and uh, I'm just fortunate and so glad that uh, ICE has been a, a partnership with us and and I and I truly believe it has saved saved lives. So when when they're deported after they are convicted, mm -hmm. how confident are you that they're not able to come back in the country? We saw the well, the you know, I I, I I wish I could answer that, but I will try to answer this way. I, 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 from from uh, if it was up to uh, the the men and women that that work uh, in the Atlanta offices and the other offices and the uh, folks out on the border. Uh, I would have a lot of confidence that they would not come back. But because of the uh, uh, president's uh, stance on and uh, his uh, chief of the Homeland Security, I, I, I feel like that probably a lot of those folks are slipping back in. Uh, haven't seen a lot of them come back into my county, but that doesn't mean they're not in somebody else's county. Senator, what's the main reason that you're announcing this expansion now? Uh, is it because of the murder in San Francisco, or why come forward with this now? I think it's critically important to be talking about this issue ahead of the legislative session. I don't, uh, you know, to the kind of to the last question, if San Francisco, if the law enforcement agencies in San Francisco had policies in place that Sheriff Warren has in place, Catherine Steinle would be alive today. I mean, I think that's an important point that needs to sink in with everybody. Um, and so, yes, I mean, we, we want to highlight uh, out of this tragedy, we need to try to move forward on this before we have our own tragedy here in Georgia. And so uh, I thought it was appropriate. We've been talking about a lot of additions to Senate Bill 6, uh, but I thought it was very appropriate to come forward at this time uh, so that we can continue to try to build support. We've got 12 co-sponsors right now. We'd like to see that number grow. Um, and we're going to try to do our work between now and January to make that happen. So that's why we thought the timing was important to go ahead and come forward now. Senator, is there any statistics that uh, uh, go back to the number of fatalities in traffic accidents attributed to illegal aliens? The only number that I could tell you right off the top of my head, and, and it's not a traffic accident number, it's a homicide number, uh, the number of homicides committed uh, by folks that had previously been in ICE uh, custody. I believe it's 121. There was a news report on that a couple weeks ago. Um, but the, the statistics are out there um, about the, the terrible damage this does. And frankly, I think this is becoming a less partisan issue. I know that Hillary Clinton was asked about the situation in San Francisco earlier this week, and she said there is no reason 
that that person should have been running around. They should have been in the jail in San Francisco. And, uh, you know, uh, I think anybody that takes a different position is standing to the left of Hillary Clinton. So the logical conclusion would be that the uh, deaths that have occurred from homicide would somewhat represent a, another number on the other side of uh, automobile accidents responsible to illegal aliens. Absolutely. Yeah. So why are we waiting for uh, this poor unfortunate woman to be killed in San Francisco? We already have that death toll in Georgia. Good question. Uh, I would like to add to that. Uh, a few years back when the, uh, when the president uh, issued the order uh, uh, and they, they started re releasing, Homeland Security started releasing the uh, illegals that, uh, uh, that had been turned over to the, the, to, to the facility, I mean to Homeland Security. I recall that, uh, and I forget how many, but I think right at 169 individuals were released back into Georgia. And uh, I, I remember at one of the, I'm not sure if it's your station or one of the other stations, we did a, they, we did an interview and, it, and the problem is we don't know who they are. We don't know if they're on probation. We don't know if they were uh, uh, on parole, uh, you know, and so, uh, I, you know, I, I think it for, for the protection of citizens here in Georgia and throughout the country, those are individuals, we need to know who they are and, and how to, uh, and try to keep up with them. And, and you know, so anyway, that, hopefully that asks them to answer some of your questions there. Senator, you use the word sanctions. Can you tell us some of the options that you're considering or if you've decided on what that would look like? We're still going through that process. I mean, I think uh, it, it will be a series of both incentives, which, which you heard the sheriffs refer to in terms of additional monies for jurisdictions that comply with ICE holds, um, as well as looking for sticks uh, for uh, for jurisdictions that are stubbornly refusing to protect their citizens. I mean, we believe that that, uh, that needs to happen. And so we're, we're reviewing the possible uh, measures that we could uh, put forward, uh, but all of that will be in the substitute language when we bring that forward. And just to follow up on um, the first question, was that something you were already talking about prior to the San Francisco case arising, or did it kind of germinate from there that this is something we need to look at? We, we started talking after the end of the legislative session about expanding Senate Bill 6. Um, part of the reason for that is that since we had, you know, there hadn't been a hearing, there hadn't been any movement on it, we saw it as an opportunity to say, how can we in a larger way address this issue? Um, so we were already talking about changes. Um, I think that it was brought to my attention within the last 30 days that there were jurisdictions in Georgia that were not complying with the ice holds, and so we felt like that was a component part of this that needs to come into play, um, as well as, frankly, the federal government playing keep away with information on these folks, um, and, and we've got to figure out a way to address that. So all of those things have been in the mix since we adjourned. Senator, how difficult do you think it will be to turn off the spigot? I mean, I, I can't remember the last count. I think it was like 18,000 um, deferred action status folks were given driver's licenses. I mean, how do you just do you take those away? I mean, are they null and void if this law passes? I mean, how difficult do you think the political will is? Well, I hope that, uh, that we're able to find the political will to do it. I mean, I think mechanically, yes, we can, I think we can address all those issues. Um, you know, states are waking up all over the country about how wrongheaded the policy is of issuing licenses to illegal aliens. In New Mexico, uh, Governor uh, Susanna Martinez has been working tirelessly to try to repeal their law and go to, the, go to the position we're trying to take here in Georgia. They just cracked down on a massive amount of fraud that was occurring. Almost 70% of the licenses that were being issued were being issued in false names. So this whole, this whole notion by the opponents of this measure that, well, if we give people driver's licenses, we'll be able to track them, we'll have accurate information, the facts on the ground are proving that's just not the case. So I think that uh, to some of the points that have been made here earlier, making the public aware of this issue is the best way to generate the political will to get this law passed. Josh, could I add to that? Sure. <clears throat> Thank you. Lori, I, I wanted to make it clear that those of us who insist on strict enforcement of immigration laws 
didn't make much noise when President Obama's deferred action for childhood arrivals was first announced. And nobody said anything about the driver's licenses going to those people. There is a great deal of sympathy for someone who was brought here by their parents illegally. But the fact is that we all can see the, the raging and relentless incrementalism of, of politics in general, but especially the illegal alien lobby. So it was first we're going to give driver's licenses, quote unquote, to the children. And then it was expanded to we're going to erase any age limitation on what is defined as a child with the expansion of DACA. And then Obama also invented another program called DAPA, which was <laughs> now going to give um, de facto status to the parents. It is easy to see the incrementalism that is intended here. The next action will be for the aunts and then for the uncles. The goal here is open borders. The goal is to not have any enforcement of our immigration laws. If there were a way, and there isn't, to ensure that only, quote unquote, the children got a driver's license and you could keep it away from the future illegal aliens, that would be a very adventurous avenue to explore. I can tell you a lot of people would want to do that. I can also tell you that that's not going to happen and that if we do not take the choice of, of the intention of the long-standing Georgia law that no illegal alien gets a driver's license or any reward for being in Georgia, people will leave. We know that enforcement works. If you can get a driver's license in Alabama or California or Wisconsin, people are going to leave Georgia. And for most of us, that is our goal. But before they were able to get driver's licenses, there was still a problem. I mean, it's not like they didn't just come because they could get a driver's license. No, they didn't. And, and, and to that, I would point to the raging media fury of 2011 when we were told that we're never going to have another onion, blueberry, or peach if we actually have an enforcement law because all the immigrants, legal or illegal, are going to leave Georgia. And then we read about this labor shortage alleged in the ag business and in the restaurant business because apparently all the immigrants, their words, not mine, left Georgia. In 2006, when Senator Chip Rogers did his bill, we saw an outward migration of illegal aliens from Georgia. And then the word goes around the country, hey, they're not really going to enforce those laws, and they come back. In 2008, you, can't, you, you have a possibility to go to jail for driving without a license. A lot of illegal aliens left, and then the taxi cab business went sky high, and bicycles became very popular. But it's undisputable that enforcement works. So whether or not we're dangling a driver's license in front of somebody as a reward, we're not trying to, to decide which reward to give them. We're trying to make Georgia the least attractive state in the country for people in the country illegally. Senator, I want to talk about the politics of this again, because um, we saw Donald Trump came out with comments. We saw you know, his businesses were um, taken away from him and all of that. And, but because you mentioned mean spirited and all of that, but there, you know, how do you rectify if Republicans need to reach out to minorities to to, to get votes? How do you rectify this? I mean, isn't this mean spirited against the Latino community? And how do you attract Latino voters? Every legal immigrant that I've talked to about this issue, everyone who has gone through the process of becoming an American citizen, they all share what I think is a fundamental American ideal, which is commitment to the rule of law. That is what this legislation is about. It does not matter if someone is coming from the southern border or the northern border, if they're coming through an airport or a seaport. Um, the way I think we have to address this issue is to say this. You know, we would all like to see some action occur at the federal level. I know I would. In the meantime, we have to deal with the situation as we find it. And I'm not going to tolerate additional collateral damage like what we saw in San Francisco with the murder of a young woman that did not, should not have happened. She, she, should, she should be alive with her family today. And um, I don't think there's anything mean-spirited about that. I think, I think that being committed to the rule of law and committed to public safety for our citizens is something uh, that is not politically difficult to uh, get across to folks. And while I think it has been uh, politically difficult here at the Capitol uh, to move forward on this legislation because of certain special interest groups that are out there, I think 
the more regular folks in our state hear about this issue, the more upset they are getting. The number one thing when I, when I start talking about this issue anywhere in the state, the first thing I say is, do you know Georgia is issuing driver's licenses to illegal aliens? And there are two reactions. People are first shocked. They think I'm not being straight with them. And then once we make that clear, they are mad. They are very mad. And so I think uh, as we get that across to folks, um, I think we're going to be able to move this forward. And, you know, as far as the, the messaging part of it, again, I think we have to be very clear. The Republican Party stands for the American principle of the rule of law. And I join with Hillary Clinton in saying that ICE detainer holds should be respected by local governments. And I think people that take the opposite view are taking a position that is to the left of the Democratic, uh, the presumptive Democratic presidential nominee. Do you know how many folks who were granted driver's licenses in Georgia were charged with crimes under the Deferred Action Status? I, I'm not aware of those numbers. I know that we're, we're a little over 18,000 in, in total licenses issued. If the current litigation was resolved in favor of the administration, I believe over 100,000 folks would also be eligible. Um, but I, I could not tell you right now today how many people who have been issued driver's licenses also uh, have some sort of criminal background. And I want to make sure that we don't necessarily fuse those issues. I mean, if somebody, regardless whether they have a driver's license or not, if they're being uh, held in Sheriff Warren's jail on an ICE charge, um, you know, they, they need to remain there until ICE has taken the enforcement action. And uh, when we have three of the largest counties in the state not doing that, I think we are, we are asking for tragedy. Senator, which counties are not um, implementing high school? My understanding is it's DeKalb, Clayton, and Fulton. Senator, isn't the down the road implication of having illegal citizens with driver's license uh, a strain on the back check of the voting populace at the poll, can they not Both. wangle their way into getting a registration? Can, can I see those images again? Do you have a, I, I think that's, a, that's a, a point I've made several times in this debate is the voter integrity issue. Hmm. Now, this is a driver's license that would be issued to someone with lawful status uh, to be in the state right here. Um, a, a citizen would receive this license. This is the license that is issued to somebody that is in the country illegally but qualifies for deferred action status. As has been noted, the only difference are these two words limited term above the driver's license. There's nothing on this license that indicates right. that this person is not a citizen. There's nothing on this license that indicates that this person is not otherwise eligible to vote. The Supreme Court recently ruled that citizenship, independent citizen, citizenship verification is not allowed. So if someone were to take this license with the intention of fraudulently registering to vote, I would submit to you that there's a very good chance they would in fact be registered to vote. And that has happened in North Carolina. I work at the polls and I can tell you there are some of us who work at the polls that are a little older than I and a little less uh, observant and maybe have poor eyesight, and that particular notification will blow right on by them. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, Josh, I'd like to follow up on Lori's earlier question. Do you, talking about Donald Trump, do you agree with his uh, statement that most of the immigrants coming in from Mexico are either in his words rapists or criminals? No, I don't agree with that statement. Um, I, I believe strongly in the process of legal immigration in this country. I believe that immigration, legal immigration has made this country what it is. Um, what I also believe has made this country what it is is a respect for the principle of the rule of law. And when we have uh, the government facilitating uh, the people who are in the country illegally then acquiring documents that allow for employment, that allow for further uh, participation uh, here in Georgia, I think that's fundamentally wrong and I think we ought to direct state policy in such a way as to get away from that. And, and I will underline again, 
I'm not saying this is the panacea. I, I recognize that we need action at the level of the federal government, but I'm not willing in the interim to have people murdered in this state by people because lo a local law enforcement agency is saying we're not going to honor an ICE detention hold. Any further questions? Yes, ma'am. Senate Bill 6 ran into some trouble last year. Um, do you think this being an election, or next year being an election year, do you think that that will help its chances? I certainly hope so. Um, I think that, uh, you know, again, as people focus on this issue, as more and more Georgians learn that the state is issuing driver's license to, licenses to illegal aliens, and as more people look at the tragedy of Catherine Steinle, and again, the fact that her murder need not have happened had, had the uh, ICE detention hold been respected, I think people are going to become very interested in seeing us act on this as soon as we get back. Um, I'm not in the, in the business of handicapping what's going to happen with an individual piece of legislation. All I can tell you is I'm going to offer this bill again in a substitute form next year. I'm going to respectfully request a hearing, and if we are completely stymied from doing that, I'm going to look for opportunities to add this legislative language to other bills that are under four consideration, and that is, that is my plan for 2016.